you know, we got to wait and see and see how things go the next two or three days. So uh, he's at least questionable. So his status has been, you know, upgraded to where I think uh, doctors are pleased with everything. So we'll just start kind of getting him back into things and and then just see by the time we get to Thursday what it looks like, you know, to where we get him for a little bit or not at all on Thursday and then moving forward we get him. We just got to wait and see how things look. But uh, he's at least going to be questionable for the tournament. You, you saw what he could do in Australia. What would he add uh, to this team? Well, he adds he adds a lot. One, he's a rim protector. He you know he was double double in in Australia, so he's somebody that can rebound the ball. He can score in the post. He's athletic. He blocks shots. Uh, he's a big physical presence at six nine and a half, two fifty five. It just gives you more depth up front because we've been we've been thin up front. Um, so. If and when we get him back, that definitely helps with our, our depth. And Alex, what's the latest on him? Uh, he's probably doubtful. Uh, I haven't heard anything uh, upgraded with him today. I've, all I've heard is from EK standpoint, uh, being upgraded to at least questionable where uh, Alex is still doubtful. You lead the nation in scoring uh, 105 points per game. Have you been a part of, of a team that did that before? What's that been like? No, I, well, I don't know four games in. You know, it's, there's a lot more analysts and statistics being done earlier and bits and pieces. So, um, you know, we've always taken a lot of pride and you try to be hard to guard and you you try to be hard to score against. And, you know, our possessions are way up and that, that favors us because I do think we have a lot of guys on our team that can shoot and score the basketball because we know how to handle it, we know how to pass it. Right now the ball's moving, people's moving, so the offense looks good. There hadn't been any, there hadn't been an offense that's been stagnant, it's been moving, and the hardest offense to move to guard is movement. And right now we've had that. Um, people have pressed us, they've thrown multiple zones at us in four games, and they've manned us. So we've seen a variety of a lot of different styles defensively, and yet for the most part, there's been periods, but for the most part, we've been really consistent there uh, through four games. And we're seeing our team defense continue to evolve and continue to get better. Um, the numbers may not say it because we're playing at a high rate of speed. We're playing, um, you know, our games, I would say we're probably top 10 in the country in possessions per game. Uh, so those numbers are always going to be elevated some. So it's about how we're getting scored on. And we're seeing through film. When we bring that back to the guys, they do a good job of trying to correct that. So it's not just them doing it offensively. We're seeing a lot of growth at the other end as well. You said after last game you would go back and look at the threes on defense. What did you see there? Yeah, uh, twofold. Um, I think a lot of it has been driving kick. Some of it has been driving kick issues where uh, whether it's on the ball or our gap help that we're doing. Uh, some of it have been on second shots uh, because we've been a little bit vulnerable there. We've given up some second shots and second shots I think always end up being layups, fouls, or kick out threes. Uh, and then the third component of it, we've been really a part of four games that have had a big widespread of points. Mm -hmm. And so now what you get when you're down 20, 30 points, the opposing teams just shooting threes to try to get back. So some of it has been that as well. You're playing a team that's uh, unbeaten. I know it's still early in the season, but do you think this will be your biggest test so far against uh, Portland? Yeah, because you know, like you've said, they, they've played three games. They haven't been beaten. You know, so our bracket has three teams in there with Nebraska, Dayton, and Portland. All three teams doing well, and all three teams playing well. So um, these are three good teams just in our bracket. Anytime we go to a tournament, it's about trying to win your bracket, and that's really our bracket. So if we, we're not even discussing Sunday with the guys. It's about, we got a four-team bracket here uh, with Portland, Dayton, and Nebraska, and it's our job to try to do everything we can to win that bracket to set up uh, what Sunday could potentially look like. But uh, yeah, they've got a lot of good experience, and uh, Terry and I go way back um, from when he played and I played, so excited for him to be in the coaching profession at the head coaching level now, and uh, he's obviously gotten his career off to a good start winning his first three games. What have they done well? Well, they dribble, the, dribble drive the basketball very well. You're going to see a lot of multiple pick and roll uh, type of sets and what they do. So they're constantly trying to go downhill in, in ball screen action. Uh, and then they've split between at least what we've seen on tape from man to man to two, three zone. Um, so we, we're figuring we're going to see a little bit of man, a little bit of zone. Uh, but they're an offensive team that uh, they do like to play with pace. Uh, they've got very good guards. Um, all conference selection, all conference first team selection. So 
Um, they've got good guards. Anytime you've got good guards, you know, you can control a lot of things. Uh, and a stretch four that's second lean scorer and lean rebounder. So uh, they present some some issues early in the season uh, as we're trying to find ourselves. You, you've got two games. The first one could be or will be at 8, and the second one could be at 9 p.m., back-to-back -back days. How do you handle that? Well, the travel is better, for one, this year. Last year we were in Maui, then we were in New York City, then we had to go to Spokane. You know, so we had a lot of travel last year. The year before, even worse. Uh, I think we were the Bahamas. Chicago. I mean, we've we've done a lot of traveling, and this year uh, it sets up better for us. Our exempt tournaments in Anaheim, so we'll be the last team to arrive. Most teams are coming in today. We'll get a practice in our own building today, sleep in our own beds tonight, and we'll bust down after practice tomorrow. So I, I think from the travel standpoint, it it benefits us in what we're doing. Uh, and now it's just about trying to take advantage of that and being in a local tournament. It's got Coach Wooden's name on it. Uh, that always means a great deal to us. So we want to play well. We want to perform well uh, and obviously put expectations on us of, of trying to win this thing. What is the backstory? I mean, obviously there were, used to be the Wooden Classic, uh, kind of a one-game thing, and now the Wooden Legacy is a, a three-game tournament. How did that change kind of come about? Yeah, I'm not sure how it all changed. I've been a part of both. I, I've been in the – when I was at New Mexico, we were part of this tournament. Uh, and then I've been – when I was at the University of Iowa, um, I was part of the, the Wooden Classic where mm -hmm. we just played a, a single game. I remember playing Louisville and Indianapolis in that. So uh, it's always been an honor for, for my teams to be in something that has Coach Wooden's name on it. And this obviously being more of a tournament uh, situation, it's got even more meaning on it because you got a chance, uh, a classic, you always feel like you won a game, but you didn't really win a tournament. There's two other teams there, so playing in their game. So now you actually are, are competing for a you know a tournament championship that's got coach's name on it. You could face New Mexico in this tournament. Would that be special to you? Well, no, it wouldn't be special to me. It'd be it's awkward. Those are never fun. It's like playing Long Beach the other night. Uh, coach Munson's a dear friend, and so I, I never like those games mm -hmm. uh, because those are teams that you're always rooting for. I, I know that that Coach Munson's playing at Washington tonight. You know, so I'll watch that game just because of the interest there and. Um, same way with Coach Neal at New Mexico. I, I watch all those games uh, as a fan. Uh, you know that once you are a Lobo, that's a part of you. And that was uh, six great years of my life. And it was a university that did and still means a great deal to me. So I root for them constantly to to do well. I follow all the sports, to be honest with you, at New Mexico, and because I knew a lot of those coaches and still know those coaches. So I always want them to do well and and succeed. So. Anytime you all of a sudden, if you get paired up and have to play, that's not a that's an uncomfortable feeling because obviously you're working somewhere else. Steve, what this uh, the, the mo of this team so far has been very entertaining, fun to watch team. What what about from your perspective? I mean, how much fun has it been to watch the, get up up and down the floor, play this fast? Well, time? they've been fun from day one. Um, back in the summer, really back in the spring, seeing how the vets took what happened last year and really tried to dive into their individual development before the freshmen even got here. Then the freshmen arrived and that had some enthusiasm <coughs> to it. And then we went on the foreign trip, uh, going to Australia, getting those practices in July and August. We saw the enthusiasm. We saw how they competed like crazy against each other in July and August. So they've just been a fun group of guys. Now we haven't had adversity, you know, adversity at hit. And sometimes adversity can can help build things or it can rip things apart. And so, you know, there's going to be adversity hit at some point. We've had a little bit of it with injuries, and the guys have dealt that dealt with that extremely well. But, you know, the, the years of perfect records and those type of things have long gone. So we know adversity is going to hit. It's about being strong enough and having that foundation that when adversity does hit, and adversity doesn't always mean that happens in a loss. Adversity might be like against CSUN. Uh, we're down at halftime. Uh, in a game we weren't expecting to be down at halftime. Uh, how do we handle that? How do we handle a close game? You know, and where's the ball go? Who takes the shot? How do we get the stop? These are all things that this team hasn't endured yet, that we will endure it. And I'm anxious to see how we respond to it because we got a great group of guys that really care. They spend time in the film room. You know, we had three of them in again today. Uh, you know, they just, they do a really good job of coming in and working on their games, whether it be mentally or physically. And that makes it fun as a coach. Uh, and then you see their skill set, and that's fun, you know. So, yeah, they're, they are. They're a fun group to watch, but I hope people see it more 
than just the the dunks and the threes and the I, I hope they see the way they go about it is playing the game the right way and that's what makes it a lot of fun for coaching this idea of being an entertaining team i don't know if the, as a coach you care about that but did, can that help at all recruiting can that being a team that you know Got you turn the TV and flying up and down the court and dunking. And doing well, that. I think we're seeing that. You know, we, we're coming off uh, we're coming off our toughest year, and we had a number three recruiting class in 16, and we hadn't played a game yet. Uh, and the 17 class was pretty much done. Um, was number one. I think it's now ranked number two. So we're going to have back-to-back top five classes, and all this is coming off the heels of a losing season. Uh, so I, I think that speaks volumes to kind of the style the players see and they want to be a part of that uh, new practice facility we're getting ready to move into so there's a lot of momentum that's very very positive and that's what we're trying to just continue that movement and keep that needle moving forward you mentioned not traveling for this tournament but you do have 8 p.m followed by potentially 9 p.m what kind of challenge would that present uh well it's a little bit longer day in the hotel uh that that becomes a little bit it, but at least it's over the holidays there's a lot of basketball uh, and football that are on tv over the holidays so as the guys rest they're getting to still see the sports that they want to see and but it does give us a little bit of time to prep uh because we're going to be fully prepared for portland uh going into that game on thursday at eight but then that game ends around 10 it at least gives us close to 24 hours uh, to get ready for that next opponent, whether it be Nebraska or uh, Dayton. Uh, or a lot of these tournaments, you could play at 8, and you turn around and play the next day at 2, 3 o'clock. Um, so, you know, we just got to hope that we can win this first game and get in that 9 slot. That would be uh, that'd be the most advantageous will, for us. Will you come back between the second and no, third No, we'll games? stay down there. All, all eight teams stay in the same place. Okay. So we have a practice on that off day? The we, off day we could Saturday. The off day we could possibly have a practice, but obviously Thursday and Friday now. Well, you just gauge that based on feel of, of what you think the team needs at that point, whether it's to rest or to to get in the gym. Yeah, obviously we're going to need rest because we've just played back to back days. But whether we go to gym and walk through who we're playing, what we want to do offensively and defensively on Sunday, we've got local high school and those type of things set up that we don't have to travel far uh, to get in the gym and just do some things that we want to do. You like that there's tournaments at two different venues. Uh, it's different, you know. I don't know. Last time I was, uh, last time I was in this, it was not, you know. So it'll be interesting to see uh, how that all works. At least there's a day that breaks it up so that the championship rounds um, are on Sunday, you know, it, it, when the facilities switch. But I haven't played in a tournament where they've switched facilities. Bryce said uh, Sunday night he thought the games this year you all have shot the ball best are the games where you've shared it the best. Is that something you'd agree with? There's no question. And that's something we continue to harp with this team because we want to put opponents in a situation where they, they're trying to take different things away. If you want to take trying to take Bryce and Isaac away, then the drive games of of Zoe and, and Aaron come into play and the post play. Right now we're getting one-on-one -on -one in the post. And our posts are proving how good they are in the post. So we want that diverse way of playing to where whatever you, we see you taking away, you're giving something up. And we feel like what you're giving up is just as potent as what you're taking away. The key is, do we have the right spacing? Do we have the right people movement? And do we have the right ball movement? And right now our guys are sharing it at an unbelievable level. And that's what we got to continue to do. We can't uh, get in a rut to where we're taking bad shots. We don't need to be a team that takes bad shots. I don't mind playing at this pace. And, you know, we some people say we quick shoot. I don't even mind quick shooting uh, with this team because of its talent as long as they're high percentage shots. If we get high percentage shots two seconds into the shot clock, that, that's fine with me as long as they're high percentage shots um, because I got a lot enough trust in this team that uh, we're going to make a high percentage of them. It's just the contested tough shots that we don't need to be doing. That That's going to hurt not just our offense, but it's going to hurt our defense. And I think the breakdowns that we've had defensively um, in our first four games have had a lot to do with our breakdowns offensively, and that's just learning to play at this pace. But when we've gone through stretches of turning the ball over to high level, that's led to a lot of easy stuff at the other end and puts a lot of pressure on your defense. So it's like the Long Beach game, and I think it was uh, maybe the Pacific game. Games where we don't have, or it's, um, it could have been the San Diego game, I can't remember now. But when we only got, we had nine turnovers against Long Beach uh, with three minutes to go in the game. We ended up with 11. Uh, and that game was just like this the whole night. And so if we can learn to do that, where we're turning it over 12 or fewer times, 
uh, that's not just helping our offense. It has a real impact on what we're doing defensively. That willingness to, to share the ball or maybe just the, the lack of being worried about getting your own points. Is that something, that attitude, is that born maybe in the locker room and how the guys get along? Yeah, you know, they've really, and again, I, I give a lot of credit to the Australian trip because we got to spend 10 to 14 days in Australia and they got to know one another. We got 10 extra practices that you normally don't get in the summer to where we were able to get them together and bonding and just getting to know one another. We got a lot of California kids too, so they've kind of, grown up or at least played against each other uh, and they know each other pretty well um, so that's made it a little bit the transition a little bit easier too but you know when you go into each year roles change um, and the guys have done a really good job of accepting those roles you know whether it's been Bryce getting off the ball now and Aaron being more on the ball than he is off the ball and Zoe coming in and being a guy that's not just on the ball but then we go four guards and we give it a look like we had with Kyle Anderson so you know, different guys are coming in with different roles this year, and they've done a really good job of accepting, accepting them and playing at a high level. And I think they're all seeing how the more everybody does well, it makes them look well individually too. Are you going to have a Thanksgiving meal uh, at the, the hotel together? Yes, it? yes, we will celebrate Thanksgiving um, like we do a lot of years, but in a hotel. I think last year it was, was Maui, so this year it will be uh, Anaheim. I say turkey gives you uh, the tryptophan from the turkey makes you sleepy. So you gotta, we gotta watch out for that. <laughs> well, we do have to watch out for that. I'm sure that that Wes, who is our strength coach as well as our nutritionist, will have everything in line to what we've got to eat. Makes make sure we're uh, ready to go. Have time for one more question. You said, do you have Lonzo playing off the ball very much in that four guard lineup? Well, really, with that four guard lineup, nobody's playing off the ball. If you watch us play, it's and when TJ's in there. Um, with those four guards, we're playing whoever gets it goes. And so we kind of elevate how fast we play. And it's really about how we can make those decisions at that rate and still defend at that rate of speed. And so we're not really, people make a lot of, lot to do about who's on the ball, who's off the ball. But really, if you watch us, it, sometimes that's hard to even tell because I just want that thing moving. And uh, obviously, Zoe has a lot to do with getting that thing moving uh, and it becomes contagious with everybody else.